Thanks to Super 7 for sending these out. Check them out and links to get your Super 7 TMNT Ultimates in the description. Horror, Kaiju, Dragon Ball, and more. Steven Story Reviews. Hey there, collectors. It's Steven here, and welcome back to another TMNT review, where today we're going to be taking a look at the Super 7 Ultimates TMNT Mutagen Ooze Glow Turtle Brothers. So we're going to be taking a look at the order of the original release, Raphael, Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Donatello. Each one of these figures was available through a limited one-time pre-order only window as individual or one group release. The order window has since closed and they are now on the market, so they are only available on the aftermarket, but let's maybe say a hope that eventually we may get a reissue or perhaps there are going to be some other retailers who do happen to get their hands on some and they'll be able to offer them to you. But nevertheless, they are available now. Some folks are waiting to get them in hands. And maybe you just want to go ahead and wet your whistle with some glow-in-the-dark mutagen ooze goodness. Well, I am very happy to say that I was a little hesitant to see how these turned out in hand. And oh boy, I really do like these. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit too much. So let's take a look to see whether or not these four brothers are going to be worth adding into your collection. Now, let's go ahead and start with a section that I normally don't cover, and that's going to be the boxes. Why am I covering this? Because the boxes are just pretty much cool. So, Mutagen Ooze Glow, that's the idea here, and for these boxes, they basically tackle that idea. Oozy, glowy, yellow, they're neat. Here's going to be a comparison for Raph on Raph, reason being... The rest of my turtle figures are boxed up as of right now. Um, they're kind of put away just because we're after the holidays. Um, I'm kind of reorganizing my studio and my storage space a bit. So uh, Raph is the only one that I have on hand right now, accessibly. So yeah, here's just how the comparison looks. So let's go ahead and take a look at the turtles. So here's how we're going to do things. I'm just going to talk about them all in general, because realistically speaking, for the main body, they all share the same tooling, right? Same sculpt, pretty much same general paint applications, except for the unique parts for each turtle, right? So for the head sculpts, they're all going to be different. For the different belt parts, they're going to be different. The colors are obviously going to be the same, except for where they're different. What do I mean? Well, when we take a look at Raph first, obviously, we're going to have the neon red here <laughs> for Raph. We're going to have that be the uh, bandana, the headband, whatever you want to call it, the mask over the eyes and around the head. And then around the belt on the plastron that goes all the way around to the shell, on the bands, on the arms, and on the legs. That's going to be the same, obviously, for the neon blue for Leonardo, for neon orange for Mikey, and the neon purple for Donnie. And it all comes out really well with the paint application that isn't really bad whatsoever. Now, the paint is rather minimal, but let's talk about the paint apps. The eyes for all four brothers are going to be yellow, as long with the yellow nails on the hands and the feet. There's going to be yellow on the belt as well for their letters for themselves. The plastron actually does have a little bit of paint, and it's going to be selective orange spray, and it looks very nice. On the shell, we actually have three different shades of green going on. It's going to be a dark green for some of the more raised sections, then a very slightly lighter green for the sections that are going to be lower, sort of the bumps in the valleys. And then around the edge, we're going to have an even lighter green. Nice attention to detail there. Obviously, these are glow in the dark figures, so they are made of translucent green plastic that glow extremely bright when the lights are turned off. So throughout the review so far, you've seen shots where they're with lights on and then with the lights off. So very cool. I'm going to talk about the translucent plastic and actually how rigid the plastic is here in just a minute. But in terms of looks, everything is just fine and dandy. The only thing I will say is you may have noticed that when we turn the lights off, you can't really see the eyes or make any sort of difference or differentiate, I should say, between the brothers with their markings. If we could have gotten glow in the dark eyes or letters on the belts, that would have been cool too. Now, for articulation, this will be uh, pretty much the same body that we know and love. We love... Eh, they're turtles. We love the turtles. So, for the neck, it's going to be on a barbell style or double axis ball joint, where we're going to have a ball joint in the head and then a ball joint in the neck down here. So, we're going to be able to move the head around in a whole bunch of different directions. We can move the head up, down about that far, rock it from side to side, and spin all the way around. For here, just because of the shape of some of the different heads... 
uh, that we do have. There will be some variances between the turtles, but realistically speaking, it's going to be the same. Now, for the shoulders, they are going to be on swivels and hinges. You can actually see the joints. We'll talk about that in a second because of the plastic. And uh, they don't V cut, but they don't necessarily go directly all the way up um, just because of the plastic a little bit. But they do a fine enough job. Keep in mind, going back, you are going to have the shell. So make sure you just move the arm out and you can spin all the way around. And of course, because of the hinge, our turtley guys can T-pose. We do have dedicated bicep swivels, which is great to see. And then we do have single hinge elbows. So they bend about that far. So not exactly 90 degrees, but with these uh, pads, you can push them a little bit. So this way they have a little bit of give to them. They do also have, let me go ahead and show you, a bit of a swivel there as well. So we can get some extra micro adjustments, as I like to call them, out of that joint. Now for the wrists, for the default wrists out of the box, we do have ones with hinges that move up and down like this. Then for all the extra hands that we do have, we have hinges that allow the wrists to move in and out like so. So that's something to keep in mind. We do have some options for uh, the hand parts. And to be clear, the ones that move up and down, those are gonna be gripping hands. Now, for the torso, do we have anything up here? Well, it kind of looks like we have a bit of a joint cut here, but uh, on the four that I have for glow in the dark, doesn't really want to move at all. For the waist, there is going to be a ball joint, so it does look like we want to move and groove a little bit here, so we can twist and turn right there at the hips, which is cool. Plastron is made of a softer plastic, or almost a rubber, so this way we can kind of see right down in there. Cool. For the hips, standard uh, Super 7 layout. So this way we have a swivel that allows you to kick about that far forward, that far back. And then we have hinges that kick out to the sides just like that. And then as you can see, we do have dedicated thigh swivels, which is great. So we can spin the legs around. Single hinge knees that plug in for a swivel as well. And then we do have ankle rockers. Great. All right, so let's go ahead and let's answer some questions. Joint tolerances. How bad were they for this batch of figures? Pretty much not really bad at all. For my Leonardo, uh, this knee needed a little bit of shock oil to loosen up. Um, and even then, that was just for my preference. For Mikey, um, this elbow joint needed a little bit of shock oil and a little bit of a heat treatment to get it unstuck. And then uh, after that, it was moving just fine. And uh, that was pretty much it. I think Donnie had a little bit of a loose um, shoulder joint hinge and I needed a little bit of shock oil. But keep in mind, that was for me. Um, that was for me. That was what I like to see to make sure that I was comfortable with my action figures. Um, I thought overall it was fine. There weren't really that many issues, any issues at all, really. So two thumbs up, I would say. Yeah, that's good. Now, a big question here. We have two turtley boys who uh, have weapons that they store on their back. Can they reach them? Answer, Donnie, clearly yes. How about Leo? Yes, he can. Hmm, but why am I not clearly showing that? Well, the plastic for these guys really, really hard. So anytime that you're going to be uh, putting stuff in and out of their hands, uh, mostly this guy, that guy, and this guy, this guy, uh, their weapons, I would advise using heat. Donnie can kind of skirt around that. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Also, whenever you swap out any of the heads, use heat as well. I would advise heating the top of the head with a blow dryer because if you heat down below, you'll just loosen the neck and then good luck getting the ball joint out of the out of the head. Very hard. You're going to need pliers and a dish rag. Now, something that I wanted to wrap up this section about, I kept talking about seeing the joints uh, in the plastic. What does that look like? Well, translucent plastic can be fine. Can being the keyword. I have bad luck with translucent plastic, and I know several others have as well. A lot of my support stands uh, from other companies. They basically crack. Uh, just given time, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I have a lot of other figures that just instantly joints crack. Um, I have a couple figures where they are just translucent and they've cracked. So 
I'm hoping that these will hold up fine. The joints in and of themselves are not translucent, so that's good. I'm just worried about maybe the surrounding areas of any problem figures. Um, if they are not handled correctly, that they may crack. But other than that, I mean, these are not an issue for the units that I have in hand. So, so far we're good. Accessories time. Let's talk about those. Accessories, and all of the turtles come with pretty much the exact same thing, with respective changes to each brother. The turtles are going to come with three alternate sets of hands, which are going to be the changed uh, gripping hands. They're going to come with fists and slightly splayed out hands. They're going to come with a slice of pizza, opening closed turtle communicators, a baby turtle, and they're going to come with a broken can of ooze. All of them are also going to come with the respective alternate sculpted head sculpts by the Four Horsemen Studios for Super 7, as well as their signature weapons. In Donnie's case, he's going to come with two different bow staffs. Now, throughout this section so far, we've kind of flown through what they look like for when they are with the lights on and with the lights off, and now we've moved into what the alternate head sculpts look like with the lights on and then with the lights off when they glow. Now, let's go ahead and transition over into the general accessories here, so this way you can see what they look like as well. And like I said... The accessories are the same throughout all four turtles, and then we're going to end this section here with taking a look at the weapons and then some action shots. So here's kind of the catch-22, if you will. The accessories that we get are really, really cool because we get the pizza, the communicator, the ooze, the, the turtle. Nice. Awesome. But we miss out on some of the more unique accessories that kind of make you scratch your head because like on Raph's back, we don't have a weapon to put in there. And likewise with Mikey, uh, there's no chain nunchuck, nunchaku, nunchucky. Go ahead. Correct me in the comments, please. We only get the rigid one, which for this one, uh, if you compare it to the normal release, that one had a little bit of give to it. You can put a little pressure on it to form it a little bit. This one, I, I can't really put any pressure on it. I start to get stress marks almost immediately. So that's a little disappointing. We also miss out on things like the pizza box and the turtle grappling hook, which, I mean, okay, can you really make that glow in the dark? Uh, maybe not, but even still, we kind of miss out on that feeling here. But at the same time, maybe not everyone wanted all four turtles. So if you did get one with just those accessories, that rounds it out pretty well. But at the same time, all of those accessories fit those turtles, and if you get all four, it kind of rounds them out real well, and it's still a good value. So, I don't know. Everyone's probably going to feel a bit different about that. I'm kind of mixed. I think it works well. The only real downside is I wish Mikey would have come with his weapons that came with chains, so this way he could have put them on his back. And I still wish we still could have some way got throwing stars and the fist dagger, the, the, yeah, all that fun stuff. But nevertheless, I do think that we get a pretty relatively solid value here. If you do need support stands or you need effect parts, you know I got videos to help you out. But like I just got done saying in the articulation section, use heat to swap out the heads. And also use heat if you think you are going to break anything whatsoever. If something doesn't fit, blast it with heat. Don't break anything. Size comparison time. These are going to be straight redos of the original release turtles. So this way you know exactly how big they are, but just here's a reference point for how big they are going to be with other figures in your collection. And speaking of the original releases, here's going to be side by side 360 spin views with the original waves. One, two, three, and four releases. Yep. Like I said before at the top, uh, the, the turtles are unfortunately sort of boxed up and packed away right now. But I think this works really well. You can see them on all sides. It's pretty cool. We got to burn time a little bit so this way we can get all four of them up spinning around and looking at each other. And I think that if you have the original releases, these are still good to have up on the shelf as well. Because let me tell you, these guys, they got to light up a room. Yeah. So buy now, skip or wait for a deal. If you were a bit hesitant, I'm sorry to say you missed out because these are actually really, really cool. Admittedly, the price of the glow-in-the-dark powder that is used in plastic, according to Brian Flynn, you know, of Super 7 fame, or Brian Fleon, depending on the time of the year, yeah, that price has gone up, which means that the price for glow-in-the-dark stuff has gone up, including the price of these turtles, which that is something that some fans did not have a great reaction to. Here's what I'm going to say. In 
psychological research. Oh, uh, we're going there. I'm putting my degree to use. There is value that can be separated from a product. So once you separate the dollar from this product, this is great. If you buy these, if you get these in hand, there's no way to say that these are not a good product. I really do like these. I really do enjoy these. Once you assign a dollar amount to them, everyone's tolerance may be different. You may say at $120 for maybe two of them, that's going to be too much for you and you don't want to be involved. Okay, well, the aftermarket is definitely going to change some things because the value of these is going to appreciate unless there's going to be maybe more stock that comes around sometime soon. So here's what I'm going to say. If you can get them for an affordable price, you are going to get some really neat looking turtles because these are fun figures. Keep that in mind. Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me. I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up. Thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.